All right, so Earth's axial tilt. One review question before we roll. Um, thinking about Kepler's first law, we maybe glossed over this last week, but at which position in Earth's orbit does summertime in the Northern Hemisphere occur? All right, so I'm seeing the votes kind of split between one and three, which is no surprise. Um, each of this, these are a position where summer occurs. Um, Northern Hemisphere summer actually occurs at point three, when Earth is at its farthest distance from the sun at aphelion. And Southern summer happens at position number one, when Earth is actually closest to the sun at perihelion. So if we consider this fact um, and you know, just recognize that summer doesn't happen at the same time of year in both hemispheres, well, then we can't really explain the seasons by just whether or not the Earth is close to the sun, right? Otherwise, we would expect that summer would happen in both hemispheres at the same time when we're near perihelion. So clearly, there has to be something else to explain the seasons rather than just our proximity to the sun. Um, Earth's orbit is relatively circular. Its eccentricity is low. And so seasonal effects are not due to the eccentricity. Some of the seasonal effects on Mars are because its eccentricity is a little bit higher. But we'll talk about that in due time. So if we look at Earth in the, um, in its, uh, sorry, aphelion, perihelion, perihelion, when it's closest to the sun, then at that time of year, the Southern hemisphere is pointing toward the sun. If we consider the sunlight that comes from the sun incident upon the Earth, the Southern hemisphere is receiving more total amount of sunlight. So it's summer in the Southern hemisphere. And if we kind of look at the geometry of the Southern hemisphere at this time of year a little bit more closely, then we'll notice that the sunlight illuminates a little bit past the South Pole. Um, so if we name that region, we draw that region out and name it, then we call this the Antarctic Circle. And during the summer solstice, the sun never sets at the South Pole. So uh, the Antarctic Circle experiences a full 24 hours of, of um, daytime then. The Arctic Circle, meanwhile, is completely dark. So half of the entire um, sphere is illuminated, but because of that axial tilt, the Arctic Circle is completely out of the sunshine during Southern summer. The complete opposite situation happens when we are at aphelion, so during Northern summer. Um, now the Northern hemisphere is receiving more sunlight it's summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. And now the situation is reversed where the Arctic Circle is illuminated all day and the Antarctic Circle is dark. So those are some initial effects to notice. Um, there's also two special times of year where neither pole is tilted toward the sun. So imagine this picture rotated by 90 degrees. Um, the axis would be sort of like this, if my head is the sun and my thumbs are the axis like this, right? Whereas this is summer in the Northern Hemisphere, this is winter in the Northern Hemisphere, and then these are equinoxes. Okay, so at equinoxes, both hemispheres are then evenly illuminated. So neither one is receiving any more or less sunlight. Um, the equinoxes happen March 21st and September 21st. So we just passed through our autumnal equinox recently. And um, we can notice that there's changes in the days that are happening now, right? The days are getting shorter, for one thing. If you pay very close attention, you'll notice that the sun is setting um, farther and farther to the south compared to directly east and west. And the other thing that you can notice is the sun doesn't reach as high of an altitude as we go toward our winter solstice. So all of these um, effects together have some important consequences. Uh, there's practical impacts for solar panel installation, um, for passive solar building design. Um, vegetation is impacted by sun altitude effects. Um, avalanche safety is impacted by aspect. So what faces north or south during specific times of the year when there's snow. And of course, this sun altitude drives the seasons. So um, we're going to focus on the seasons and this idea with solar panels today. but. Uh, there's lots of other reasons why we care about the altitude of the sun. Um, I want to share with you a simulation tool that you can use. This one is available online. 
And basically what this is showing us is um, the observer with their view on their horizon. So we've got our cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. And then the sun is um, here in the sky. And this circle illustrates the path of the sun on the sky. Um, I've got this set up right now for, well, now September 21st um, in Eugene, so 44 degrees north at noon. And so if I now start to drag my date toward the winter solstice, um, I can see that the sun is rising to a lower and lower altitude. So its maximum altitude is getting closer and closer to the horizon. If I go all the way around, then it starts to come higher and higher above the horizon again. Here's my spring equinox. And then finally, as I go towards summer solstice, the sun will reach its maximum altitude that it could ever reach in the sky in Eugene. And notice that that's not directly overhead, right? So because of our latitude, the sun never hits our zenith point. There's always some angle away from the zenith point for the sun here. Um, okay, the other thing that we can notice while we're here at summer solstice is that if I kind of look at the length of the day, the sun has a much larger arc to traverse, so it's up for more of the day time. Uh, so our days are longer and our nights are shorter here in summertime. But if I look instead at wintertime, then the nights are much longer and the days are shorter because that arc um, that the sun spends above the horizon is really short. Uh, the other thing you can notice here is that if um, in the wintertime, the sun is setting and rising more to the south of due east and west, whereas in the summertime, it's rising more to the north. People use this for passive solar design when building their homes. They try to put large south-facing windows um, so that it receives lots of um, wintertime sun and avoids summertime sun from the north. So practical implications here. Okay, I think I showed you what I wanted. Length of day, solar altitude, 